Hey there, how's it going? The GMTK 2021 Jam just wrapped up and it was quite the ride. If you aren't familiar, the YouTube channel Game Makers Toolkit, which you should really be watching if you aren't, runs an annual 48-hour design competition that continues to grow and break records. Last year, more than 18,000 people joined and over 5,000 games were entered. I was lucky enough to have been selected one of the top 20 winners with the game that I made called Make the Way. And one year later, it's time once again to join thousands of other game devs to make a game in 48 hours from a theme. This time, I feel so much more pressure though. Last year, I was just taking part for the first time and hoping people would like what I made. I had a fairly small YouTube channel and I figured it would be fun content and that was pretty much it. Of course, it went better than I could have ever dreamed, but now I feel this expectation for myself. I've been struggling quite a bit with stress and anxiety lately, and I was really thinking of just not taking part in the jam at all. I had built it up so much in my head that I didn't think I was going to really have any fun taking part. And seriously, game jams are stressful. They really are. You have to do a lot in a very short period of time. If you aren't having fun during the process, then what's the point of putting yourself through it all? So I dropped the suggestion to my friend White Vault to see if he would want to team up with me instead. This shares the load and will help me separate what I did last year and this year to being two different things because this time I'm doing it as part of a team. White Vault and I did the WoWee 3.0 jam a while back and we had a great time working together. We both have similar styles and philosophies when it comes to making games. Seriously, I want to be as good and quick at pixel art as he is when I grow up. And real quick, because I'm sure some people may be curious, Droopy had too much going on in real life, and I asked about teaming up far too late, just for those that were wondering why we didn't get the whole dream team back together this time. The jam started Friday at 11am for me. Vault and I were both on a call and watched the theme announcement live as so many others did. This year, we have 48 hours to make a game with the theme of... Joined Together. I want to see games where at least two elements are connected together. Interpreting a jam theme is always interesting, and it's amazing to see how the process is different every time. I always try to not use my initial idea because I assume that many others are going to be doing the same thing. My mind was flooding with thoughts of platformers where two characters were tied together in some way, or two elements linked with a chain or a rope in some capacity. White Vault had an image that he had found recently that he really wanted to use as inspiration. The art is really cool, and this concept of a door or portal that cultists have to give offerings to was a really neat idea. Basically, we turned it into your life or well-being is joined together with whatever this Eldritch entity is. I was still thinking of things like Ice Climbers, so I jumped at the idea and we spent the next 30 to 45 minutes refining the concept. Just picking up and placing items seemed a little too straightforward. I recently played Overcooked for the first time with my daughter. I know, right? Somehow I just had never played it up until now. So with that definitely still fresh in my mind, we tweaked the concept a little bit to be an eldritch horror demon creature thing has taken you captive. You must make them the food that they want to keep their hunger bar full. Because as I said before, your life and their hunger are joined together. If they get so hungry that their bar empties, they will eat you and you will lose. To add a little more action and stuff to do while the food is cooking, we decided to add in a twin stick shooter type mechanic by making all of the ingredients little demon creatures that are jumping around all over the room. You enter the room and the doors close and lock on you like in a roguelike. You must deal with all the creatures before they will open again. This will use up precious time each time you try to get an ingredient and heighten the tension as you try to clear the rooms as fast as possible to get back to your food. With that plan in place, we both hopped off the call to start our respective Twitch streams and get to work. I got underway as you would expect, setting up a player box that can move in eight directions and shoot wherever the mouse is pointing. I created some placeholder creatures that you will need to stun and pick up. Because they aren't going to be aggressive, I set it up so that they'll move around randomly, and just generally be annoying to hit. I use the same concept as the people in a game I made a while back called Flyer Kid. We like the idea of the player being in the kitchen with the stuff that cooks, and then moving into separate rooms to collect the ingredients. We wanted to keep everything within scope, so two rooms seemed reasonable. One would be the pantry, and it would hold half of the creatures you would need, while the other half would be living in the cellar. This would mean that you would need to go between the two rooms depending on what was asked for. While I was doing all this, Whitefall was cranking out the art for the demon and our player character, as well as some temporary layout mockups. He sent them over to me and I threw them in to just make it look a little nicer so everyone wasn't just staring at the colored boxes that I made. But I hadn't hooked up any of the animations or anything yet. The rest of the stream was spent getting the ability to enter the pantry, have it spawn a number of creatures, and lock the door and only unlock after all the creatures in the room had been stunned. After the stream, I made sure to take a break for a couple of hours to have dinner and hang out with the family a bit before I got back to work. 48 hours really isn't a lot of time and it will sneak up on you real quick if you're not careful. We had a bit of an ambitious concept, and I wanted to make sure that I could make it work and not let my team down. To add a little variety, I made it so that whenever you enter the pantry, it rearranges the shelves in the room. I was worried that the game would be confusing to play at first, and we were going to need a tutorial. 
that's when I got the brilliant idea of why not create everything with a tutorial flow? That way I can make and teach one mechanic and then make and unlock another one and then another until they're all there. And then when someone doesn't need the tutorial, we can just skip to the end and unlock it all for them. Yeah, that's a great idea, me. Spoilers, this was a bad idea, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. I set up a dialogue system that would give you instructions like go to the pantry to find a certain type of enemy, then give you an arrow of which enemy to pick up, then tell you to put it in the cooker, and that's all awesome. I did choose to divert from the overcooked inspiration and not have any prep stations where the player had to actually stand there and wait. I was worried it would slow down the pace of the game, so you just put stuff in the cookers and it does its thing. This makes the experience more about running around between the rooms and not sitting in one place hoping that the counter counts down faster. But with the way I was setting this all up, I was running into a lot of bugs and having general issues with all of it working consistently. I chalked it up to it being late, so it was time for some rest and we'll get back to it on the next day. Saturday, I did another stream, but I was really not happy with the progress so far. I had hoped to have all the systems in place by now. That included cooking, feeding, and orders. And what I had was the first stage of a tutorial that was overly complicated in the code and causing conflicts. Yay! So on the stream, I decided to not bash my head against the code for a bit and implement all of the art Whitefold had been sending me. Dealing with my spaghetti code nightmare can be a future me problem. We're going to have six food types, and they're what you would usually think of for an Eldritch Abomination. Pigs, donuts, Fish. I don't think fish are supposed to have feet. Cheese kittens, slimes, and wine. What were you expecting? The blood of the innocent? There will be three ways to prepare each food. You can boil it in a cauldron, freeze it in the fridge, or zap it in the microwave. I know that I prefer wine microwave to enhance its aroma. Five Michelin stars, here I come. After a few hours, we had a lot of the general art in and animations hooked up. They're so cute, White Vault killed it on everything. After the stream, I took a little break, and then it hit me about how much work I had to do, and it was time to dig in. We planned for a cellar and a pantry to split up where you need to go for certain items. There are three specific creatures per room. I didn't want a situation where the player would enter a room and not be able to get the item that they needed. So when spawning, the system will create one of each creature for the first three, and then if there's any more creatures that need to be made, it'll pick randomly after that. This way, if you need a donut like we all do sometimes, one will always show up in the pantry when you enter. It's now that sad time in every project where I become future me and have to start dealing with all of the garbage past me has been putting off. I have to say, this time, that guy's a... <clears throat> Excuse me. The whole way the tutorial and process was set up was just utter trash. There are so many things that depend on other things happening in a certain order that if one element is out of place, the whole thing goes to hell. Even when everything is working, it's still too overly complicated, and the moving forward with it was just impossible. I had thought myself so smart, thinking, why don't more people do this? You just build the tutorial and it's all good. Well, now I know. It's because it's way too complicated and doesn't work out the way you want it to. I ended up making all of the mechanics tied in too much with the tutorial elements, so they didn't really work properly, even if I followed the proper steps. Thus began the exciting process of rewriting a bunch of mechanics that I had already spent a lot of time writing. This really isn't a great state to be in, but sometimes you just gotta do it and you keep working, right? I got most of the elements working independently like they should. You can now enter a room, it will lock, you can stun the enemies, the door will open, you can pick up the enemy you want, put it into one of the cookers of your choice, and when it's done, you can pick it up and give it to Velma. By the way, Velma is the name that Vault's Twitch chat voted on. Great, finally, it's mostly working. There's only one problem. It's like 2 in the morning and the jam ends at 11 a.m. I still need to have an ordering system, win and lose states, the linked up health and hunger bar, which is the whole thing this is all based off of, audio, effects, menus, and more. I gave up on the idea of sleep or taking another break at this point and settled into the grind. I suggest to not pull all-nighters in game jams, but I didn't really have much of a choice with this one if I wanted the game to be playable. So, in this case, do as I say, not as I do. For the ordering, I decided to go with three options at any given time that you can feed to Velma that will increase your life bar. If you give her something she doesn't want, your bar will go down faster. This whole build just seemed to take me forever. It didn't seem to matter what I did. I ran into so many little bugs and issues that I would have to stop and spend 10 minutes debugging here, 20 minutes there, 15 minutes there, and the time just disappeared on me. Sometime after 4 a.m., I gave up completely on the idea of getting an in-game tutorial back in, and I tried to just add elements that would help the player passively. For instance, the cooked items don't really look like their living counterparts, so in each room I made posters that go on the walls in the back that show what each creature produces. But the game is still silent and not super juicy. So for the next couple hours, I added sound effects, particles, screen shake, and the like to help with the overall appeal and polish. And like everything else on this project, this took forever too. I've never been great with audio, so I rely on sound packs that I've purchased over time. But that does mean that I now have to sift through them to find which one works and which one doesn't, which always takes me a while because I never know specifically what I'm looking for. It's about 8.30 in the morning at this point, and I was about to pass the 24 hours of being awake mark. 
It's been a long time since I've stayed up for a full 24 hours, and I'm getting too old for this. With the gameplay as together as I'm going to be able to make it, it's time to get the menus and the win and lose screens together. They're a bit lackluster, but I was just trying to make sure that we had all of the elements in that we needed, and that's the best I could do. I finally uploaded the game, and we did some very brief testing around 9.30 in the morning to see if everything was working okay. No matter what, there's always issues with the build that you need to go back and re-export for. This was no exception, but I found out later that I missed a massive thing, and I'm really sad about it. With around 20 minutes left in the jam, I was setting up the itch page and the whole site started to go really wonky. Everything was loading really slowly, image links were breaking, and it just overall felt like the site was going to have a bad day. This is really not uncommon for the end of the Game Maker's Toolkit jam. Thousands of people trying to upload at the same time will cause issues to any site that doesn't get hit that hard all at once often. Seriously, there were over 21,000 people that entered this jam. No, not everybody will be uploading a game, but that's still nuts and a lot of people. In the end, there were over 5,800 games submitted. So to be safe, and before I had finished the itch page, I went and made sure to actually submit the game with 17 minutes left before the deadline. I then spent the next hour trying to get all the graphics to show up on the game page. They didn't. So I gave up finally and went to lay down around 12.30 in the afternoon. I had planned to get up about four hours later and start working on this devlog. Yeah, not really what happened. I didn't wake up until around 8 p.m., sleeping through two different alarms that I set. I guess I needed the rest. And that is the end of my GMTK 2021 Game Jam build. And this is the game that Whitefault and I have created. Eldritch Eateries is a top-down, twin-stick shooter style game that is heavily inspired by the games Overcooked and The Binding of Isaac. You play as a chef who's been captured by a ravenous demon who has linked your life with their feelings of fullness. They will give you three desired items that you can feed them. You will run between the pantry and the cellar to collect the creatures that need to be cooked. Because the creatures run all around, you must stun each of them before you're allowed to leave the room with the one you desire. Then you will prepare it as needed before feeding it to your captor. I added a normal mode where the player must prepare 5 meals to win, and a hard mode where you must prepare 10 and the timer moves a little bit quicker. I also added an endless mode so you could just keep going until the time eventually ran out. It tracks the number of meals that you made and saves it as a high score. The only problem is, I screwed up the trigger and nothing happens when the counter reaches 0. So there's no way to set your score because it never actually finishes. This was not what I intended when I put Endless Mode. I'm sorry for the bug. I'll fix it when the judging is over and I can upload an update. I'm writing the script about 10 hours after the submission, and there are already quite a few comments. Most people really seem to like it and absolutely love the art. The one thing I keep seeing is that it's confusing at first, but it's fun once you figure it out, which I was worried about and why I put so much effort into trying to make a tutorial that I unfortunately just failed miserably at. I really, really wanted that in there, but unfortunately, sometimes with a game jam, the reality set in and you just have to get something done so you can submit. I've also seen a handful of comments of people saying that the game is too hard but then there's also comments that say the game is too easy as well. So I don't feel that I hit the balance properly, and I do think the game should be a little bit easier than it currently is. I've also seen a couple comments of people not being able to put down an item, and I'm not sure if that's because they're not in the right place, like in front of a machine or in front of Velma to actually feed them, or if there's a genuine bug that's causing the issue of the item to get stuck and not be able to put down. Either way, it's an issue for me to check out in the future, because it either means that my coding is a problem, and there's a bug that's not letting something work, or I haven't made it clear enough of what you're supposed to do and people are just getting confused. No matter how the game does this year, I had a lot of fun making it and teaming up with my friend White Fault once again. I think it's a really neat idea that keeps the player in constant action. If you're interested in trying out the game, I hope you do and I hope you enjoy. And if you participated in the jam and are seeing this still during the judging period, I would really appreciate a rating as well. There were over 5,800 games submitted to this jam, which is just an incredibly large number. Check out the links in the description to our game as well as all of the others also. I'll be playing games on my live stream all week and I look forward to seeing what everyone else has made. Thank you to Mark Brown of Game Maker's Toolkit for once again putting on a fantastic event. And thank you to my friend and teammate Whitefault for crushing it on the visuals and making this game so appealing to look at. Please check him out live on Twitch, and he just started making videos here on YouTube as well. The links are in the description. Send him some love. Even though I ended up sacrificing a bit of sleep, I had an amazing time, and I'm really pleased with the outcome. Minus a bug or two. If you want to see and talk to me while I work on projects like this live, check out my streams at twitch.tv slash vimlark. Thank you all very much for watching. I would like to give an extra special shout out to my amazing Patreon supporters, especially Clone13, Daniel Martin, David Scott, Nightfall, Kevin Halgau, Cormai, MLK, Motsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Straight Up Gruntled, and Warren Steven Rose. You're all amazing, and I can't thank you enough for all of the support. Once again, you can get in contact with me on my live streams, message me on Twitter, or join my Discord with a lot of other really cool people. If you've enjoyed this, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.